But I'm not the only one taking on TSA. Tulsi Gabbard has announced that she is also looking to take up legal action. And joining me now to discuss is one of her lawyers, Ben Sisney. He is the uh, Senior Litigation Counsel for the American Center for Law and Justice, and he joins me now. Ben, thank you for jumping on with me. This is really important that we discuss this because Tulsi Gabbard, when I got the call that she was added to this terror watch list, I couldn't believe it. And then I had to talk to all of these other sources who confirmed it, and then they sent over a copy of her profile. And it was outrageous because she is for a former member of Congress, obviously, a former presidential candidate, but she's serving currently right now in our National Guard. So as an attorney, when you found out that she was added to this list, what was your reaction? Um, you know, these days with everything we've witnessed in the last few years, uh, I, w I would like to say I was shocked, but to be <laughs> honest, I, I don't think I really was. I don't I don't think too many of us really were. Uh, this is kind of par for the course with the direction things have been going. And um, it, but it, to, to the point you're making, I mean, it's, it's absurd. It's ridiculous. We, we, we have, um, and I don't care if people try to make it a bad word, a patriotic American who um, has, she, you pointed out, she, she serves the country still. She served the country before in office. Um, you know, and, and as I've gotten to know her, I mean, she's as patriotic and America loving as anyone I've ever met. She's, she's an incredible person. And that this has happened to her is absolutely outrageous. Uh, I think that um, uh, thanks, thanks to you and, and some of your colleagues that, that have stayed on this and have helped and have been a part of bringing light to this and, and, and whistleblowers that have been brave and come forward, um, you know, th that, that something can be done. You know, we're happy that, that on, on the appeal, they, they, they pulled her off the list. Um, that's great. And, but, you know, it's, it's not going to be one of those, there's nothing to see here, move along kind of things. I mean, they've got to answer for what happened because for several reasons. One, if, if I may, I mean, Tulsi has pointed this out, the waste of taxpayer money and resources when there's real terror threats. That, that's something to point. The, um, the, the, uh, the first minute, it's First Amendment retaliation, by the way. It's punishing people. It, it's, it's the chilling of speech. It's the punishment. It, it's, uh, you know, to send a message to others, not just her. I mean, obviously, it's to send a message to her, but but we know how 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 they work. They're sending a message across the board. They're sending a message to pro-lifers. I mean, it, it's a different story. But I've got another client who was was described over at uh, Fort Liberty uh, as a as, as a terrorist because he's pro-life. You know, and is this idea of 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 threatening and if you dare to oppose the narrative and, and to speak out or to even ask questions. I mean, Tulsi asks questions and, and, and they're going after her like this. So, so anyway, the short answer to your question is it's outrageous, but not really surprised. Yeah. Well, that's the part in all of this. I, I've been talking about this for over a year now, and it was frustrating to hear that uh, so many people who showed up to a legal permitted rally on January 6th were added to this terror watch list. Uh, some of them were charged with crimes, but crimes like trespassing, nothing serious. A and then others were just in attendance and they were added to this terror watch list. And they haven't been able to get off this watch list. They haven't gotten any qu answers to their questions that they've been asking for quite some time right now. And, and I've tried and I've submitted FOIA requests and TSA is aggressively fighting me off trying not to give me that information that I'm requesting. And it's upsetting in itself, but you have to fight back. And I know Tulsi said that she was going to look into legal action. So where are we right now? Are you guys going through the FOIA request phase as well? Yes, absolutely. So we, we sent off a series of FOIA requests uh, from TSA and Homeland Security and then, you know, the FBI and the DOJ and even the State Department, the CIA, because, you know, as we know, traveling has international components as well. And so some of those agencies may have skin in this game, too. And so we sent all these FOIAs off for her and her husband, uh, by the way. And, and so the deadlines haven't run yet. We're starting to get some early correspondence from the various agencies. But I fully expect that they're, that they're going it's going to take a lawsuit, um, and uh, that's that's what we're you know expecting to happen. I'd love to be pleasantly surprised and have an agency comply with the FOIA for once in my career. But <laughs> again, not not shocked if they don't. So we're gearing up for that, looking at some other options, legal options that might be available to her. Um, and um, I, I would expect within the next couple of weeks there may be some more um, on that front. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm excited to see that uh, you guys are stepping up and doing this for her because this is really important. And just because she's no longer on the list doesn't mean that we just kind of go away quietly. We need to be right. loud about this because so many Americans are added to this and it's not fair to do to them. I mean, so many, we talked about on this show too, there was an eight week old baby whose father <laughs> did attend the rally was added to the list as well. And we know that because we had the boarding pass that has the quad S in the bottom corner of her, mm-hmm. or the child's boarding pass. And nobody wants to answer to any of that. It's outrageous. And there's no reason for it and it's a failed program they've never actually caught a terrorist on a flight and so it's a waste of our taxpayer money and it's really concerning that they're still allowing Mm -hmm. it to go on but here we are right now uh, just kind of pushing back at the beginning phases of all of this are you hopeful through both uh, James Comer's investigation and Jim Jordan's investigation that we might get to the bottom of something um, I, you know, I'm optimistic. Uh, the 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 tug of war between committees on the Hill and agencies is is as old as time. And uh, uh, but but to to see and, and I, I I as we were discussing before, I'm grateful to see the momentum starting. It feels like it's starting to stick, you know. Mm-hmm. And 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 you guys have been you know on this for a while, and and um, um, it feels like it's starting to stick and we're, we're thrilled to see that interest on the hill um we'll you know anything we can do to help any of those folks we will if anybody out there is experiencing any of this kind of stuff and here's another point if i can make it re- yeah. r- r- briefly is this is happening to tulsi i mean that's so that's in her husband that that's my first and foremost right now you know that they're, they're my client but if it's happening to her and you pointed out it's happened to a number of other people that we know about and but the real point here is that is what we don't know about it, it because it's so secretive and 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 the nature of national security and and, and you know classified information and, and all of that and neither confirm nor deny and you know the typical lingo there I, I i understand that but because it's so secretive i mean we only know about it when a whistleblower is willing to come forward and we having represented even now representing whistleblowers we know how intense that is and how scary that is for whistleblowers and so um so that again that's a whole another front maybe we can talk about that some other time on your show is the is the whistleblower uh problems that we're having but but think of all the people it's happening to that will never know you know you know or 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 uh or maybe they maybe they're just not somebody that that has a public you know name or somebody that people know publicly and and so they feel like they're even less uh, able to speak out or or do anything about it Reach out to us. I, I, I mean, we, it takes it takes people speaking out, as you know full well. It takes people speaking out consistently. Don't quit. Keep going. Keep going. And 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 so the more people will 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 join the momentum, <laughs> the more progress I think we'll make. Yeah, Ben, and I think it's really important. I've been talking about this for over a year now, but you know, I was late to the game. It was Sonia Labasco who who alerted me to all of this, and she's been working with all the U.S. Marshals to make mm-hmm. sure that they get the whistleblower protections that they need when they step forward to talk about these issues because it's really important that they do. Right. But at first, when I first started this, members of Congress didn't want to talk about it at all. And so just within the last few weeks, everyone's very open now to discussing this, which I'm very, very thankful for. So for our audience at home right now who might be uh, – somebody who was added to the watch list or saw the quad S's in their boarding pass one day or was at January 6th, illegal permitted rally, and then they landed on the list. It was really anyone who flew into the D.C. area, according to one of the letters we got from uh, Benny Thompson, I believe it was, uh, he had everyone added to that, that list. Where should they go to reach out to you all to kind of flag you to make sure you guys are aware of their situation as well? Absolutely. ACLJ.org uh, backslash help. Um, okay. And uh, so ACLJ.org, there's a the get legal help link and you fill out some information and then that goes to our legal teams and we review it. And and it can be anything, as you're indicating, from people that were, are just wanting to, to, you know, call attention to something or point something out or somebody's interested in taking legal action. Um, I mean, we're, we're we're a law firm. This this is what we do. So, it, you know, mm-hmm. it, it, if anybody's interested uh, or, or or, you know, they just want us to know that it's happened to them and we can kind of start keeping a tally, you know, create a list, get a better idea of just how many people's civil liberties and constitutional rights have been violated. 
Yeah, I think it's really important to get an idea of how many, because again, we don't even know that how many people ended up on this list. And right. that's really important that we figure that out. Uh, before we go, I wanted to also ask you, since you brought up the whistleblowers as well, uh, I've spoken to my sources, TSA is going after US Marshals and members of the TSA who, who might be the leaker in all of this. They're trying to figure out who the whistleblower is. Uh, what are you guys, are you guys potentially gonna be able to do anything to protect those whistleblowers? Is there anything you're currently working on? Or if, if someone who's watching right now who is a whistleblower or wants to blow the whistle, on something, uh, what steps do they take to do that? Just that. So, so um, they. they it's a lot. <laughs> our website again, aclj.org, mm -hmm. uh, to reach out there and let us know what what they want us to know in in that regard. And then we've also we've co-counseled with some other um, uh, firms and groups here in the space. You know, we represent Garrett O'Boyle uh, in an FBI appeal that's pending right now, and uh, we we co-counsel with Empower Oversight. Um, and uh, just a fantastic group that, that's just been on this whistleblower issue for a while. And then uh, the Banal Law Group we co-counsel uh, with as well and, and some others that we've worked with. And 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 um, so we we can get if somebody wants to reach out in this regard, we can get them to the right the right group or the right combination of groups. Um, and um, um, I. I, I th I'm going to stay out of talking about the whistleblower stuff more than that. I don't want to get any more details, but I think that 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 that's a good that that'll address it is they can reach out to us and and we'll do our part to make sure that um they're protected or how to get their information to the right people absolutely that's how we end these types of uh these these types of overreach uh programs that are going on that's just saying it putting it nicely at this point yeah. but mm -hmm. you know we got to put an end to this this is becoming absolutely outrageous and the lawfare and the abuse of all of these watch lists that were meant to go after actual terrorists but they're using on the american people it needs to come to an end so whistleblowers will be the ones to help us with the, with just that obviously uh but ben i want to thank you for your time thank you so much for jumping on with me today i'm sure our audience they've learned so much and we greatly appreciate it. Well, thank you. Uh, it's a privilege. We we appreciate the attention and the work that you've put in on this, along with your colleagues, um, to keep the light shining on these things. And again, keeping that momentum going. So thank you.